So all that being said, what I want to talk to you guys now about is this, is now we've got product. Okay, now we've got product. So I, I went through that real fast because I wanted to take more time with this actual training aspect of this. Okay, now sampling is something that has always worked in the network networking industry. It has worked in every industry, every single industry out there that tries to build an or build something. Sampling absolutely works. One of the reasons sampling works specifically in networking companies is when you give somebody samples, it creates a conversation. Okay, you're, you're having a conversation with somebody and I'm gonna show you some techniques. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Conversations create invitations, okay? Meaning if you get somebody to, you know, you ask them, you start talking to them, you are now inviting them to basically look at something because an invita invitation creates a presentation. And you've seen me do trainings or if you maybe you haven't, if you're brand new, um, it, it, the more people you talk to, the and, and networking, it's always been for all these years, for, forever and ever, it's whoever tells the story the most want, uh, wins. So basically, whoever gives the most presentations typically has the best results. That's There's nothing else to it. It's just usually I can tell if my check is down or up based on personal activity because it's just it's just a matter of what I do. Now, the other thing too is I always focus on what I can control, not what I can't control when I'm doing this type of business. I always realize that I can't necessarily control whether somebody says yes or no, but I can control how many people I invite or sample, okay? All right, so let's, let's move on here. Okay, so I wanna take my time on this one for a second. Um, whenever we're doing this business, this is not just so if you wanna to go to the next level, you have to understand that you are never ever uh, in a product company. You are in a people company. Okay, a lot of people don't understand that. Is they're always trying to sell, 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 and you can't sell to people unless you understand how to create influence with people. Okay, now there's a book that I recommend that you get if you really want to take this serious or really go to the next level, and it is probably the Bible of marketing in general. This has nothing to do with network marketing per se, but all of the biggest, ma most massive people in the marketing space, marketing industry, ha ha reference this book by Robert Ciel Don uh, Kyle Donny. I can't pronounce his last name. Ciel Don Ciel, Ciel Donny, Dini or whatever, right? called Influence the Psychology of Persuasion. If you want to take the lazy route, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, I jokingly say that. This book, the audio is actually on YouTube. You can pull it up and listen to it. And it's like eight hours on YouTube, but you can speed it up. I like to read when I get up in the morning with my coffee. And that's why I, I kind of seem like I, it's my process of how I do it. But this book, as an example, teaches you why people make buying decisions, how to ask questions, how to do things that when you're giving presentations or you're doing videos, what you what are trigger words, what you ask them, how you say stuff, okay? Like everything, this book basically, like the top marketers, if you've ever gone to like a website and you wonder why they have certain, you, it's not an accident why they have certain words, structures, you know, pain, pr promise, all that stuff, okay? You can get a lot out of this and, under, and your business will move faster, forward faster if you take the time to learn what makes people do what they do. Uh, one of the examples in this book, right in the first chapter, is pretty funny. This guy kind of starts this whole thing about how he kind of got started with it is there's a lady that owned a jewelry, uh, a kind of a, a trinket type jewelry store in Arizona. And she sold mostly to uh, people that were coming into the, you know, the foothills and stuff like that, uh, that she show, sold Indian jewelry. One of the things was these turquoise, like tur turquoise jewelry, and she just could not move them. Like people were not buying them. So she wrote down on a piece of paper uh, to the person, cause she was getting ready to go out of town to the, the person that was gonna work there this weekend. And she said, 
uh, mark everything half off, but she put a one slash two. Well, the person that looked at that did not read it properly. And when this lady got back, all of the jewelry had completely sold out. And what had happened is this girl read it as uh, uh, double the price. And she doubled the price on everything. And because of the psychology of perceived value of more expensive means higher quality, that kind of thing, that's what they identified was the reason it sold out. Okay. Now, the other thing, and I'm going to move into this a little, a little more because I'm not going to teach you the whole book here, is um, they, he explains also in there how to get people to do people favors. And they used the this they used an example right like people didn't know it but they were on film and and they went to a place where you made I'm gonna say it I'm old enough and you guys are old enough to remember Xerox copies right copy machine place where you literally used to have to go and make copies and he said what this person did was they went in and there was a line of there and then this person would walk to the front of the line and say, or, or to everybody there, maybe there's three, four or five people in line would say, hey, do you mind if I go in? Is, do you mind if I cut in front of you because I need to make copies? That's all they said. And people would let them in. And, they, they, and the guy, they finally identified why this was happening is because people will do stuff for people that ask for favors especially if you explain why you're doing it. And all it was, was he was just cutting in line. There was nothing to it. And there was a couple different phrases they used. And again, I'm not going to teach you all those, but I started knowing this stuff. I've used these tripwire kind of uh, sentences and phrases. Okay. So here's what I did. Okay. So about a month or two ago, our, the company ran a promo, exactly the promo you are looking at that I just showed you guys. And what, what happened was I enrolled somebody to the, I got, I did enroll, you know, I handful, but let's just say I got one, you know, somebody in that got a diamond pack. So I got an entire diamond pack of product for free. Okay. That to me is more product than I'm going to use, you know, myself personally at the moment. So I decided I was going to sample it. So what I did is I put an email together and the headline was, can I ask you a small favor? Okay, people like to help people. And it says right here, it says, I need your help. Because people, psycho so the psychology shows that the majority of people are willing to help. And then jokingly, I said, and no, I don't need you to sign up for anything. So I took the pressure off. But right there, that following sentence is the key. I'm trying to win my company's product sample contest. That's all I said. My goal was to give out this. So all I did was ask people something that was non-intrusive. I asked for help, which most people are willing to help. And I said, be the, the because phrase, because I'm trying to win my, com my company's contest. And I sent this out to a small handful of people. And I sent a few out to um, uh, a, a small group of people that I, that I, uh, have on my Facebook messenger. So this is, this is exactly what it was all written out. If you want to take a screenshot of that, you're welcome to, or, or copy it. So my whole thing I said was this, I, uh, like this is his example. Actually, this guy, Bill signed up about two weeks ago at the $600 level. Okay. And this was, I'd sent these out a couple of weeks ago. Hey, Bill, I need your help. And no, I don't need you to sign up for anything. Emojis with laughing. I'm trying to win my company's product contest. So I just explained, I don't need you to sign up for anything. And here's why I'm asking for a favor. It's not on you, it's on me. My goal is to sample out 50 of the sample DNAs this weekend. They're lozenges, they taste like candy. Explain what they were and why I was sending them. They have 15 different experiences. Here's all I need you to do if you want to help me. Just reply to this. I got to find my mouse here. Oops, back. Sorry. Just reply to this address with your mailing address. Pick one. Thanks. It's on me, right? That's really all I did is I sent that out. Now, 
here's a picture of me putting some packages together. So I actually, let's be honest, my wife lovingly put the packages together for me. Now you can, based on your budget, sample little, you can cut the little, since they're in foil packs, right? They're blister packs. You can cut them off and send three at a time. You can send one of each, whatever. I sent the boxes out, the entire box myself, because I wanted the person to see the branding, the marketing of it, how it looked, how professional it was. That was, that was really the only reason. And I had to go back and forth with my wife about it. And she just finally said, I'm tired of arguing with you about it. <laughs> okay. So just to be honest here, you know, my wife does not, she's value conscious. Okay. I just, I think things up a little differently than she does, but she's kept me from being homeless because I probably would have made a lot of stupid financial mistakes. So well, let's move on. So here's my pile. Okay. So here, now I can show you what my results were. Now you see that little thing right there where it shows the, uh, uh, I got to get my mouse here so I can move myself. You see where it shows the go kits, right? Well, what I did was I sent out 34 samples and eight people purchased. Three of them bought the 100, which at each, you can make $10 a piece. I made $10 a piece, right? Three came in at the $600 level, one at the 1800 and one at the 3000. That means if you add up all the go kit income that I got, I made $1,305 off, off of that, right? That's not too shabby. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty good. $1,300 worth of basically I gave out free product because the months before I had gotten free product. Now what happened here, but wait, there's more, but wait, there's more. Remember those, remember what happens is every go kit not only pays the person that enrolls it, but part of those packages, the volume goes into your dual team, whether it's left side, right side, power leg, left break, right? But as an example, I had, I, I got two legs going, right? Decently. And because of that, I then was able to take that other, you know, when I would sign somebody up, I put them in my pay leg. Well, $2,760 in volume, because I'm a diamond, I get 30% was another $828. So that means between my go kits of 1300, the extra volume from the kits, I dropped them in there. I literally made $2,133 because I sent out boxes of samples. Okay. So what the heck did I do with it? I went and bought a John Deere and that's, yes, I have a Metallica t-shirt on in case you can't read that. Right. Cause you know, but this is, but as an example, cause a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, you're not successful if you don't buy a Ferrari or you live in the big house. So I just, I didn't want to blow anybody out of the water. I wanted to give you, I wanted to give you a real world example, my brand new. So I just moved into a house in December. Uh, obviously the weather finally turned last month. I have a massive yard. That's the front yard and I have a backyard just as big, right? So it's like two acres of mowable, <laughs> mowable land and push mowing it. You'd probably just find my body out there uh, later on. So I went and bought, I wanted a brand new mower. And so I wrote a goal down was, okay, it's going to cost me about three grand to get this mower. If I want a brand new one, I didn't want to buy a used one. I wanted my own brand new one. So what I did was simply this is I had a goal and I took action to achieve it. That's it. Like I think people take and make this industry and this type of business way too complicated a lot of times. I mean, I'm guilty of it a lot of times too because you think the more you, the more cute things you can come up with and sometimes you think people are getting bored with seeing the same stuff, which is, you know, can get uh, monotonous a lot of times. But what I did was I identified that I had a goal I wanted to achieve. I figured out the money I was probably going to need to do that. And then I was like, okay, I can control sending out that email, sending out some texts, 
And all I did when I sent those packets out, I forgot to mention this. All I did was in the packet, I put a sticky note on the box that just said this, uh, Bill, text me when you get this. Thanks, Mike. Here's, and I put my phone, cell phone. That was it. <laughs> nothing else to, nothing more complicated than that. And guess what? People, people signed. So they did. So I had, these were all, the, I wrote all the names down on pieces of paper. And then I would get all of a sudden, I started about three, two, two to three days later, depending on how close somebody lived to me, I started getting a text. And as soon as I got a text from somebody, this is what I did. I pulled out the rapid funnel app and I didn't do it before I did it after. So I got somebody, I only, I, I sent samples of first, got them to in, take a, the initial action because here's why I wanted them to text me because I wanted them to, to be added to the process of what I was doing that made the most sense, okay? I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted them to be familiar with something, right? I wanted to go them, walk them through the process of something simple. So then what I did was I would go in and I would send them a short video of what they were, um, uh, you know, of the products. And I would put the little text there and say, Hey, Bill, here's a short video on the products that I just sent you. This is a really great way to understand uh, how the business, you know, how the products work and a little bit about the business. Really appreciate you getting a sample and taking a look. And that was it. And what happened was then people would send that or they would reply. And then I would go into the, you know, the rapid funnel and I would look at the, you know, the activity log that I'd send somebody and I'd see somebody maybe watch two or three things or I'd send it to the text and they would never even look at something. And I'm like, ah, guys, stupid. but I, I would, I mean, not basically like that. Sorry, Stacey's calling me. I don't know why. If she calls back again, I'll answer it. Um, but, you know, so, so that's all I, that's literally all I did. And by doing that, putting them on the rapid funnel and now having the communication, because remember the slide I said, Sampling creates conversation, conversations create invitation, invitations create, you know, basically presentations. That process held true. I used the right thing, you know, the, the right process, got people to take a look, and then people signed up. And that was, that was literally it, right? And because of that, some of those people now that have received samples that not only have gotten in, they have already duplicated. They have already gotten customers or samples or so on. Does that make sense? Has everybody got that? Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So I didn't want to take a ton of time today.